Hello everyone, my name is Reni Prasad and I am from Sri Vaishnava Institute of Forensic Science, BSc 3rd Sam. So my topic for today's presentation is Chiloscopy in Forensic Science which I am going to present over here. So let's start the presentation. So in this presentation I am going to introduce the topic, then the history comes, then the classification of lip prints, lip prints as a tool in forensics, aspects that can be determined by lip print. So further we can move to introduction of the topic. The comparison of fingerprints known as ductiloscopy, dental records and DNA fingerprints are the most common methods that are used for the identification purposes. In, uh, in our investigation we mostly use fingerprints as an evidence and uh, dental records and DNA. But if what if these methods are not apt and these not give results? For the evidence so then we have to move for the other such techniques so one such technique is stereoscopy which deals with the study classification analysis and comparison of lip prints or impressions the part of the human lip between the inner labial mucous membrane and the outer skin consists of creases and grooves and due to these creases and grooves we get to know about the lip prints and their impressions because every person has different and unique grooves unique grooves and creases on their lips so the pattern formed by crescents and grooves is called the lip print. Like fingerprints, the pattern of lip prints is also unique to each individual as it has individual characteristics from person to person. Hence, they can be used as an effective tool for the human identification purposes and it can also ease the investigation process and it can help the investigator officer for the investigation. Let's move towards the history of the lip print. The anthropologist R. Fisher in 1932 was the first person to recognize the presence of lines on the lips. But he did not give any practical use of the phenomenon. During 1968-71, to 71, two Japanese scientists Yasuo Shuchihashi and Tazao Suzuki examined 1364 lip prints at the Department of Forensic Odontology uh, that is situated in Tokyo University. Based on their research, they concluded the uniqueness and individualistic nature of the pattern of human lips. Yashua, Suchihashi and Suzuki, they both researched about these lip prints and they together performed the experiment on 1364 lip prints to give us the classification of lip prints. So, in finally, in 1974, Suzuki and Suchihashi classified the lip prints that we are going to use in our investigation and for the human identification purpose. Classification of lip prints. Various classifications have been devised by different scientists. The most commonly used classification was given by Suzuki and Suchihashi. They classified the lip prints into the following groups. So first type one is straight groups that extend throughout the lips. And then type one dash that is straight grooves but are not present throughout the entire width of the lips. They are only covered through the extent and uh, not fully covered the lips. They are only the type of one but they are not fully covered. And then type 2 is spoked one. They are in the shape of poke. And then type 3 intersecting groups. The lines on the lip prints intersect each other in this. And then type 4 that is reticulate groups. And type 5 undetermined that is other than this type all the miscellaneous, miscellaneous ones comes under type 5 that is undetermined so here we can see the figures of the classification type 1 that is fully covered groups type 1 dash that is uh, that is covered only to half extent and then type 2 is spoke one type third is intersecting and type fourth is reticulate one and type 5 is undetermined that is other than except this then how we can use the lip prints as a tool in forensics? The lip print can be commonly found in the cases of sexual assault, murders, rapes, etc. They may be either visible due to applied lipstick. So if the victim or the culprit have applied lipstick during that incident, then we can, uh, we can easily get the lip prints. But what if there is no application of the lipstick? then it is invisible or we can also say in the other word that is latent. The latent lip prints are deposited on the surfaces because of the most 
moisturization done by the tongue or the secretion of the minor salivary or sebaceous glands present on the permanent surface of the lips due to the salivary glands and the moisture on the lips the lip prints are created or we can say latent one then does the latent print should always be considered while investigating the crimes in and various objects such as glasses bottles cups and leftover fruits secrets and then objects such as uh, bed sheets pillow covers should be examined because such latent lip prints can be observed there and we can get a very crucial evidence over there then such prints can be developed using various types and methods then latent prints which are which can be developed by various methods which we can use on the objects which we have discussed above and then the impressions are collected interpreted according to different classifications which we have studied previously and then compared with those of suspect which are identification and for the identification purpose this latent prints are compared to the prints of the suspect one aspects that can be determined using lip prints first is personal identification the lip prints are unique to everyone and thus if found at a crime scene can play a very important role in the identification of the criminal because as every person has the unique lip prints so their personal identification can be determined using lip print then race determination on the basis of thickness of lips four groups can be identified thin lips medium lips thick lips and mixed lips then sex de determination various studies have been conducted to determine sex based on the lip prints in a research which has found that on the basis of suzuki and suchihashi it was concluded that certain pattern trends are generally common in those one of those sexes type 1 and type 1 dash are very common in females that fully groups and then groups to half extent and the type 2 is dominant in males that is the intersecting one individuals with all quadrants having unlike patterns are commonly found in males like if the as our lips patterns are divided into four quadrants so if all the quadrants have the similar pattern then it is generally found in males but if all the quadrants have different different patterns then it is found in females the lip prints can also give other details such as cosmetic cosmetic used at the time of crime which cosmetic was used by the culprit or the victim and what are the habits like if they smoke or if they drink because it can be generally fi find out through lip prints occupational qualities what is the occupation of the victim or the culprit and the pathological changes of lips lip prints are studied in post mortem cases during the post mortem or during i can say arson cases if the body is unidentified so we can generally identify the human on the body by this lip prints and uh, it is a very important identification of corpses during uh, like tsunami cases where there are a lot of bodies or corpses then we have to identify every single one so lip prints play a very crucial role in that identification process so in last i would like to conclude that after fingerprint DNA, the lip print is the most vital evidence and which can be very helpful in the identification of the uh, criminal. So thank you so much.